The cultural authority of science is in part owing to the efforts of people like Thomas Huxley in the 19th century. And we can only understand Huxley's activities if we understand that science was far more marginal than it now is. And indeed, this also helps us understand why the religious legitimation of science in the 17th century is so important, that science is not self-evidently something that is of value then. Science derives its value from the fact that it's fulfilling vital religious functions. And this was the genius of Bacon to say, science is a redemptive activity in a sense. And this is what sets science on the beginnings of having the kind of authority that we now see it wielding. If you, if you look at the state of the universities, for example, in the 19th century, when there are still religious tests in place, and it's clear that the universities, or the ancient universities, Oxford and Cambridge, are going to be dominated by Anglicanism. And it's precisely this that Huxley reacts against. And, and, and associated with that, they're not only dominated by the Church of England, but they're dominated by the humanities. And it's hard to imagine that, because I won't say that it's the case at this university, but in many universities, the situation is reversed where science is in the driver's seat and the humanities are the poor relation. And so Huxley has, has, has well and truly achieved his goals in terms of how we now understand science in the universities and indeed in society, where religion and the humanities take a back seat to the sciences. But in the 19th century, it was quite the reverse.